Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending what time of the day you're watching this video here on YouTube. We do have a piece of magic for you, but I would like to remind you, if you could, it'd be great, you don't have to, it's not a requirement, but it'd be fantastic if you could hit that subscribe button and also the little notification bell because we do upload videos twice or more every single week. So, let's carry on with the trick. Now this is a card at any number routine. Now magicians love these type of effects and this is just a, a, another variation. You'll notice it uses two decks of cards because one deck is actually going to choose the card that we require which leads me nicely into a quick plug. Don't forget if you visit the Totally Magic .co.uk website on your phone, tablet device, Android, iPhone, you can get to a page, looks very much like an app, but this is a practice app for magicians, absolutely free, designed to fit on your device. And you can choose any of these to give you random playing cards, you can also have random numbers. Now for magicians, this is great for when you're practicing. That's the plug out of the way, back to the magic. You introduce these to the spectator and you say to them, I've got two decks of cards here. So grab either one of those and whichever one you grab is the one we're gonna use. The blue, okay? Can you put those in your pocket? We're gonna use those in just a moment. Okay. You turn to the other deck, in this case, the red deck. Now at this point and throughout this routine, you will never touch the cards, trust me. The spectator opens the cards, they tip the cards out and you then ask them to shuffle the cards, okay, whichever method they use, whether it's a riffle shuffle, overhand shuffle, or anything like that. They can shuffle, they can even pass them around the room to get them shuffled. Let's just show you the card. You ask them to spread the cards just to have a look that they are just a regular deck of cards. Before we go any further, I am going to have a premonition. I'm going to write this premonition on here, and you're going to be amazed at this. Now I know it sounds impossible, but on the back of that card is your card that you're going to choose. You then ask the spectator to pick up, they've shuffled them, but you're going to get them to shuffle them again by taking cards from the pack, deal them down, and it doesn't have to be from the top, take them from the middle, the bottom, you might want to deal with some from the bottom, from the top, and they don't have to be singular, take out clumps of cards. Yeah, really go to town on this. Really get them to mix these up as much as they like until they've got about half the cards on the table. When they finish doing that, you eliminate the remainder. You ask them to square them up. You shuffled the cards. You've now ripped apart the pack from the middle, from the bottom, from the top. I now want you to pick those up and deal two heaps of cards. Again, going backwards and forwards, you can deal more on one than the other, it doesn't really matter. In fact, you can deal them all into one pile if you want. It is a totally random choice, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, that's it. I now want you to grab one of those packets and just drop it on with the other cards over here. Slide off that top card that you arrived at. You could have had any of those. This is your card you've randomly arrived at. Remember a few minutes ago, I said I had a premonition and I wrote down your chosen card on here. That seems absolutely impossible. What is the card you arrived at? The Seven of Diamonds. You're not gonna believe this but I haven't got the Seven of Diamonds written on here. What I've got is a number, number 19. 19, no, 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 19. 
But that was a random choice. Now there was a reason I wrote down 19. I want you, I'm not gonna to touch them, to take out those cards, remove them, and I want you to deal face up 19 cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, the 19th card is your card, and that's a perfect premonition. So here's the method for this great little trick of a card at any number. Now, the magicians watching this, you would have guessed already, right at the beginning of the routine, that we used a thing called magician's choice, because I needed the spectator to grab hold of these. And that's why at the start we said we had red or blue, and I always use the term, grab one of those. Now, whichever one they grab, if they had grabbed the red, we'll say, okay, we'll use those, can you put the blue in your pocket? So, it will work either way. But the reason we need them to put those in their pocket or safely away, is because this is a stacked deck. And I'll come to that in a moment. This is just a regular deck. There's nothing odd about these at all. And the spectator will remove the cards. They give them a shuffle. They can even hand them around the room and get other people to shuffle these. Because it doesn't matter. And I think that's a strong selling point of this routine is the fact that you, the magician, never touch the cards throughout. Once they've been shuffled, tell the spectator just to spread the cards on the table. They may need a little help with this, but just spread the cards. Now, you couldn't care less about how shuffled these are. All you're interested in is this card here, right at the end on that. Now, I've just noted that's a king of hearts. You ask them to turn the cards over, and you're going to make a prediction. What you do is you get a piece of paper and a pen, and you write the number on here. Now, now I know the King of Hearts is the 17th card in this blue deck. Uh, again, I'll explain what I'm using there, but I know that that's the 17th card. And I, I've just written your card on here. The rest of it is just all performance. You then ask them to pick up the cards and deal the cards down. Now, watch what happens here. You tell them to deal the cards down. This is the king. As soon as they've dealt one or two, say to them, no, 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 anywhere. Take it from the middle, from the bottom, from the top. Not just single cards. And basically, they get the impression that they've had a choice of any old cards until half the cards are there they eliminate these at this point it all looks messy clumps of cards they pick the cards up and then they deal them into two piles at the moment the king's at the bottom as they're dealing say deal blocks of cards two three four on there Go backwards and forwards as many times as you like. You can deal all the cards onto one pile. All you're interested in at this point is which pile they finish on. Now we finished on this one, so I know the king is there. We do the classic grab a packet. Now if they grab these, you say we'll use these, we'll get rid of these. If they grab these, you say put those on here. Magician's choice again. We come to the build up, slide the card off, get rid of the rest of the cards. We know what the card is, the King of Hearts. I then turn this over to reveal, well, that's not your card, it's 17. And they're kind of a little bit confused here. They think it hasn't worked, but that's when you tell them to remove the other pack they can deal to 17, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 15, 16, 17. And there it is there. Okay, it's a great routine in that sense. So we come to the stacked deck. Now, this is stacked in what we call the Bart Harding system. 
For those new to magic that haven't come across this, because this has been around since 1962, most magicians have come across it in routines and books and pamphlets. If you haven't, you want to read about it and also know how the stack system works. If you type into Google Bart Harding secret, exactly that, it will come up in Google. There'll be loads of entries in there, as you can imagine just like any other stack system and you'll be able to read all about it and learn that for yourself. I'm not going to go in depth of how it all works but it's a great way of knowing the positions without having to memorize a deck. There will be some little calculation but anyone that knows me knows that I'm absolutely useless at doing any calculations up here. So I always look for the very simplistic method, and this is one such method. But hopefully, um, once you've got this in a stacked order, and you know exactly where each card is, the rest of it just drops into place. And that's a card at any number.